Hello, this is Shackleton, the Explorer, and I'm Paul Beckwith, and today we're going to talk about superstorms. We're going to talk about the Hurricane Florence, the hurricane, the typhoon um, that's going through the South China Sea, and we're going to talk about mostly the science of these storms first. And then uh, I'll do another video and focus just on this, this massive beast that is uh, heading for China right now to an area that's um, Pearl River Delta, I believe, uh, an area of 150 million people. Compare that to about the 10 million people that are in North Carolina. But don't forget the 9.5 million pigs that are there and all of their excrement stored in these ponds. So anyway, Shackleton and I will get started. Okay, so this is my uh, this is my website, paulbeckwith.net. Please have a look at it. Um, usually, after I do a video and post it up on YouTube, then I'll go. Um, I've got a very you know a great colleague, uh, David Corn, who does an excellent job. Um, with uh, not not just the website, but strategizing, and uh, I mean, Dave's an incredible person. So, um, this is a video I did a whole series on Arctic sea ice recently, and then I did a video on the uh, what will happen if we lose Arctic sea ice. So let's have a look at the world here. So, Google Earth Null School. Just open it up. You can hit the slider on the mouse button to enlarge and shrink, etc. And we're just looking at surface winds here. We're looking at the winds. Um, and this is in the Atlantic Ocean. And we've got uh, Hurricane Florence here, which, is, uh, which came ashore. And it's just moving a few miles an hour. This is like the Harvey of the East Coast, if you like. Um, it's a massive storm. Um, it's been downgraded to a tropical storm, but it's going to be producing huge amounts of rain still as it goes along the coast. It was going along the coast southward. It, its trajectory was really weird, unprecedented, never seen before. Um, you know, it fits in the category of <coughs> Hurricane Sandy doing that crazy left turn into New York, um, Katrina. Superstorm, of course, taking out the levees in New Orleans, and that wasn't a very high category storm. And uh, then, of course, there's a couple other things here in the basin. It's very, there wasn't much activity up till about the beginning of September, and then things have suddenly jumped to loads of activity. Um, but let's have, let's go across the, to the other side here of the planet to the South China Sea. And look at this beast. I mean, this is just unbelievable. You know, we've got the Philippines here that was just raised, like basically a buzzsaw. Not much not much standing there because this was a Category 5. Um, huge winds, 205 um, knots, I believe, or two, two kilometers and... What was it? Knots? Yeah, I think so. <clears throat> anyway, look at the size of this. This thing dwarfs Hurricane Florence, and it's still got, you know, it's it's heading now across the South China Sea, up into uh, up into this region here, Pearl River Delta, um, 150 million people here, 15 times uh, the number um, that are in the uh, in in North Carolina, for example, and the South China Sea has warmed significantly like the rest of the oceans have warmed. So this is one of the things, one of the key things that people talk about, but I'm gonna systematically cover the science of why these beasts are doing, are so large, so extreme, um, so, so, so intense, and, and uh, their, their movement across the surface of the planet has changed because the jet streams have changed. So I'll go into the science of that as well, but let's go to Twitter first and, uh, Let's go through, um, so this is, uh, you know, this is the last video talking about, you know, when we lose sea ice, we have a blue ocean event, 
the jet streams were going to, are going to be centered around um, Greenland because that's going to be the only uh, cold point left in the Arctic. So that will obviously change the patterns. And here we have Shackleton. I'm not sure what Shackleton is trying to do. Let me just give him something to keep him occupied. There you go. And people are going to say, oh, you can't give him a piece of cheese. But, uh, you know, they cats eat mice and mice eat cheese. So I don't, I, that's my, by my rationale, a little bit of cheese shouldn't hurt too much. Um, so I just want to show you, um, there's some interesting images here. Um, if you have the application, if you have a smartphone, you really need to get radar scope. And if you put radar scope on, you can get images like this. And, uh, you know, I think you pay a few, 15, 10 bucks a year or something like that. So this is the storms actually going right over a radar site. So, um, the radar can only, Doppler radar, it can only detect the, um, the component of velocity either towards the radar or away from the radar. If it's, per, if it's uh, parallel, perpendicular, um, then you can't detect that velocity component. Um, this is an image just of the super typhoon Mankut, and I'm probably going to hack, hack the name. But what I want to do is show you, oh yeah, if you're in Ottawa, you got to go to this talk, September 20th. Um, or if you're if you're in Kingston or even Toronto, you might want to come and see. I mean, Stuart's an exceptional speaker, um, and uh, I I heard that Elizabeth May is attending, and the numbers are going up and up for this uh, this talk. Uh, we, we I think we've got to figure out a way to record it and then post it online. Um, so what I'm looking for, is, oh yeah, the coal ash sites not good. You know, there's also the super fun sites um, in the in, in the path. There's nuclear reactors in the pathway of Hurricane Florence, all kinds of nasty stuff. Not to mention the uh, the, uh, the the ponds of pig excrement, which are in earthen um, dam dams, just big holes in the ground, basically. If uh, I think about a foot of rain, is about all they could handle before you get start getting people start getting worried um this is interesting i you know i was talking about like, i gave a case for a declaration of global climate emergency back a few years ago rate of change going exponential situations getting out of our control it's obvious we're in trouble this is crazy stuff did a bunch of videos and uh, ben c here has uh you know has brought that up you know and that's sort of timely um the uh one of the big heads of the UN just used those words climate emergency in a speech uh, earlier. Now this is this is what I want to get to. Okay, Mike the Mike man. Now I don't know. He doesn't. This is a man who doesn't believe in spaces, using spaces. So, uh, but this is this is uh, the 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 gist. We've always had hurricanes. What makes Florence, Harvey, Irma, and Maria different? And now we've got Florence and and uh, Typhoon Meng. The, the the typhoon going to China, um, a product of climate change, the science of super storm super storms in a changed climate. So this is what I'm talking about here. So if you click on this link, um, or if you just go Woodstock the Earth dot blogspot now, it's an artist co op in Woodstock. They've got great posts, great articles, of course. Now I'm biased because this is from a year ago. Okay, Friday, September 8, 2017, but it's very, very valid here. So I'm going to go through this article, and I'm going to talk about why, um, you know, why these superstorms are so bad now. So basically, I didn't write this article. I did three videos, and they did a lightly edited, um, they took, they lightly edited the, the, the uh, transcripts, basically, the text from the three videos. And I'm going to go through this in quite a bit of detail and add the the I don't you know why re why reinvent the wheel I think it probably makes sense if I <clears throat> take this and add you know add add the updates for the, the what's happening this year and send it to you know some big publications um, you know try to get something in the Times or, or something I don't know so if you have any connections in those or any advice for me as to how to do that. Oh, um, you know, and if, and I, you know, it'd be nice if these Woodstock, well, I, I should probably take it and then do that and, uh, try it, you know, just, just to see some different places. Um, I hope this isn't too dark. My phone's kind of freaking out here. Um, 
So Harvey first. Harvey was a massive superstorm. The rainfall was 27 trillion gallons. Now I've seen numbers of 10 trillion or 10 to 15 trillion or something with Florence. You know, it's in progress, so who knows? To give you an idea, that's three times that from Superstorm Sandy, which was larger in area, 900 miles in diameter. Moody's said 125 billion for the storm. AccuWeather said 190 billion. Remember, this was September 8th, 2017, shortly after these storms hit. So these numbers aren't the final numbers by any means, and that would be insured losses, uninsured effects on the economy, jobs lost, all the cascading economic issues like food destroyed, farms destroyed, etc. 80% of Texans apparently don't have any flood insurance. Now that's where it's worse in, in North Carolina. If you're on the coast, you know, maybe in some counties along the coast, you know, maybe 20 to 30% of the houses have flood insurance, but it's going down a little bit and it drops down and overall in North Carolina it's about 1%. So 1% of houses don't have uh, flood insurance, or don't, or one percent of houses have it, and ninety-nine percent don't. And of course, you know, storms like this just can destroy everything. Um, you know, unless there's there's uh, disaster relief funds, um, but that never pays for the full cost of, uh, you know, if you lose your house. Um, this five feet, um, fifty-one point eight eight inches, in the place that got the most rainfall. Okay, so that's that's over four feet. I think there was a place that got five feet, you know, 60 inches. And that came later. That was from some rain gauges later after this date. Um, written reports that came after. That's what I remember, five feet. Um, that was over a five-day period. There were um, two, maybe even three landfalls of the storm. The problem is it was, a bu it was like a hydraulic buzzsaw. Half the storm was in the ocean, very warm ocean. Half was over the land. 185,000 homes, homes damaged and destroyed. 17% of U.S. refineries offline. But as, as bad as this storm was, and it got all the news covers, there were massive storms and flooding in other parts of the world. So last year, you know, India, Nepal, Bangladesh. Bangladesh, three-quarters of the country was flooded out in September, you know, at this time period in 2017. You know, this year, I mean, Phil... The northern Philippines just got completely razed by this uh, Category 5 uh, typhoon. <clears throat> and it's passed into the South China Sea, which is very warm, as I said, and it's heading to China. So why are these things happening? Why is our atmosphere different? How is it different? It seems to be turbocharged on steroids. Hydrological cycles are different. In a nutshell, it seems like they're different, and they are. Okay, so here's the gist of it, the elevator pitch. The Earth is a heat engine. Equators are warm, poles are cold. Heat gets transferred from the equator to the poles. About two-thirds of, of the heat transferred is via the atmosphere, setting up things like the jet streams. One-third of the heat is in the ocean currents, which are moving much slower but carrying a heck of a lot of heat because the heat capacity of water is very high, about a 1,000 times that of air. So we're losing Arctic sea ice and snow cover in the spring, snow cover in the spring, Arctic sea ice in the summer. Exponentially, the Arctic's getting a lot darker. Now, uh, you know, if, if and, and, okay, so anyway, I was going to make a snide comment about some websites that say, oh, you know, the ice is growing exponentially, but you know, that's just, you know, <laughs> it's, it's unbelievable, silly and stupid and wrong. Um, uh, children may be watching, so I don't want to use stronger words. So the Arctic's darker. It's absorbing more sunlight, heating up a lot more. The rate of rise of temperature in the Arctic is... High Arctic is five to eight times faster. You you see that number. People think it's two, maybe three times. That's if you take the overall Arctic. It depends on how you define the Arctic. You know, the zero-degree isotherm, where the vegetation changes. Um, there's all these different types of ways of defining it. Um... So the t because the Arctic is heating, the temperature difference to the equator is less, the jet streams are slowing and becoming wavier. So therefore, we're having far more extreme weather events on the planet. The frequency of occurrence, the severity, and the duration of these extreme weather events is ramping up significantly. Um, whether it may be leading to, lead to torrential rain, having torrential rains leading to floods or to droughts. Okay, so this is a key bottom line thing, and I'll continue. Thank you.